right, it's JP Raw show number 207. Tim, and we're back for the second week in a row. Yes, we are. Back for the second week in a row. All right, tonight, before my computer dies, I wanted to go ahead and get started <laughs> and talk about some, some current events. But before we do, I have one follow-up, Tim, and that, if you, if you remember, last week we were talking about, um, yeah, can I show this stuff? We're talking about the family portrait that was all messed up. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. That that conversation with uh, let's see this photo here, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was questioning whether that was legitimate, whether that was you know a real photo, um, or whether it was a, um, a hoax. And uh, Ad commented in, in right after the show, he was watching this afterwards, commented that it is indeed a hoax, and it oh, was okay. an ad campaign for an app on I guess how to make horrible photos. Um, I think this one's extra horrible because my computer's having trouble right now. Um, hopefully that's not a forebear of stuff to come, but um, that was a hoax and it is, it is not really a photographer who did that bad of a job. And we were questioning it last week because yeah. we were saying how a face is blown out, but the shirts are not. That doesn't make any right. sense. It doesn't make sense that just the faces were blown yeah. out. So anyway, that's a hoax. I don't want to spend any more time on that. Let's get rid of that guy. And continue to cross our fingers. I can show other things as we talk about I'm it. I'm surprised I didn't find anywhere that it was uh, an ad campaign. Well, you know, the thing she suckered me in because I read, um, I didn't read, I mean, the comment section on the Facebook post was like very, very long. I didn't yeah. read all that. But I did read... Um, you know, quite a bit of, of them trying to figure out somewhere along the way that they admit that it was, you know, a hoax. And mm -hmm. nowhere along the way could I find that. And I just, ah, I give up. But this this mm -hmm. is interesting either way. I just can't believe that it's, you know, that this really happened. I really wanted to to find the, the photographer. Who did this? Because she wasn't saying who the photographer was. I really mm -hmm. wanted to say who did this. Um, not that I would have them on the show or anything, Right, but I, you know, because I, they're obviously if a real photographer did that, they're probably getting a lot of bad press, and I would not want to enter into that um, situation. Um, but it's it's good to know AD, I guess, did the research and confirmed that it is a hoax. Anyway, um, going from that to this next story, if again you have to bear with me as my computer. <laughs> tries to uh anyway um what is, from that are we, no this is me that's you uh yeah uh, i can't figure out how to, to mute it well while you're trying to figure out how to mute it uh, it's uh, muted when you just close the tab it's easier <laughs> let's try that again let's try this because it looked like it froze on me Having a few technical difficulties tonight, but <laughs> all right. Um, that is not the the article I wanted. You think after doing it two weeks in a row, we'd be fine? <laughs> we would be, yeah. But I think I think technical difficulties a minute before the show starts caused me a problem. All right, we're all watching the Olympics, right? You think after mm -hmm. doing it two weeks in a row, we'd be fine? Oh, there we go again, Tim. No, I, I just muted the tab. It's easier that way. Uh, are you uh, so? Have you been watching the Olympics? Yes, I have, and my wife's been watching it almost religiously. Yeah, and me too. And you know, it seems like every time I go and turn on the Olympics, um, it's always figure skating, which is very talented. People, it's not one of my favorite events. I'd rather see some of the others, but I, every time I turn it on, you want to see the curling, right? Because it's I actually I don't mind curling. So my wife loves the um, the figure skating, and you know. A lot, most people do uh, yes. love the phys figure skating. I am not a big on the figure skating um, side of it. I, I like it, speed but skating. I, you know, I, oh, speed skating is, is incredible. But I do like um, I do like some of the um, – what is happening here? I do like the, the, the curling that you mentioned. I like that. I mean, I'm not going to watch hours on the end of it. I mean, that kind of stuff. But I do like it, and um, as I keep trying to delay as I try and get this link that is not working. Well, I, I will say one thing, and uh, I, I mean, you heard there's been multiple people caught with doping scandals and everything. 
I can't for the life of me understand why somebody that is doing curling is taking. Wait, uh, there's doping scandals for curlers. Yeah, there's one person that got busted for it. I was like, curling. I was like, I can understand weightlifting. <laughs> um, I, I don't know some some sports. I guess it would help, but curling was not one that I expected. But they said it helps with the breathing and air, and every little bit helps. I was like, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Well, as as we wait for this thing to come up, because apparently this computer is having trouble. Is like can't even get to the internet. Um, there's there's two stories I wanted to go over with the Olympics. One is the the crazy amount of lenses, and here it comes. The crazy amount of lenses that Canon and Nikon have over there. Um, they go all out, you know. So they send a team of sixty plus engineers that are over there to assist the photographers. They bring over. Um, just loads and loads of cameras. Here's the here's the the Canon stuff, where they have, what was it? Um, if we come down a little further, the article says they have over 205 cameras, 520 lenses. A um, hundred of those are the 1D uh, X Mark II, which costs over 5,500 a piece. So they got all this stuff to assist the photographers. They can do, you know, adjustments, cleanings. Focus adjustments, anything that the photographers are having trouble with, they have it there. They have spare gear. I mean, that is just incredible. Nikon doesn't give out the air. There's some of the cameras. Nikon doesn't tell you how much they have, but what they did say, here's a Nikon gear. What they did say is that they have several hundred luxury cars worth. So like you were going to put it in value. Several hundred luxury cars worth of gear. Now, here's a luxury car, a Toyota Camry. Or a Ferrari. I mean, whatever. Either way, several hundreds of either one I would of those. I'd say more than Lexus a, line somewhere. Or Lexus there. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. Uh, either one of those adds up to a incredible amount of, of worth. But you know, it is if you look at it, the Olympics. That's what you in a lot of the big sporting events, Tim. Even though Sony has made incredible um, bounds in inroads. Uh, inroads into Sony, I mean Canon and Nikon's business. The the sports side of it is is the one area where you still mainly see Canon and Nikon, and I think they don't have the lens selection that is needed. Yeah. Even though if you look at some of these pictures that you have in there, it's all uh, one specific lens. It looks like it's a seventy two hundred, or actually I don't even know what that uh that lens is. Um, like the fifth from the top or something. Well, I'm sure they have a, a bunch. Those are probably of like three hundreds. But they might they, be like three hundred two point eights or something. Yeah, they probably have three hundreds. Um. I don't know about it uh, here. I do know that, you know, it, at football games, they're going to be shooting with 400 two eights and 500 F4s. Right. And, but they're always going to have – it's almost the 7200 is the, the standard lens almost. that Everybody's mm-hmm. going to have that because you're going to need something for those times when the, the players get a little closer. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I always love seeing that. I typically – you know, you watch the sport, any sport event I watch – I enjoy the sporting event. I get into the sporting event, but I also love watching when the, the athletes get close to photographers and um, trying to quickly because it's not they don't keep the camera very long. Quickly, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, look at what kind of gear they have. You know, what were they shooting with Canon, Nikon? What kind of lenses? And you see, it just draped all over their body. It's just an incredible amount of gear. Um, the other story I had from the Olympics uh, was this one lady saying her worst day ever at the Olympics. And what it was, you see that sleeve, that green sleeve. That is like your credentials as a photographer to get into the event to shoot. Okay. So I I can't remember what nationality she is, but she's not Korean. She doesn't speak Korean or read Korean. Um, and she's over there. And, the, you know, the people over there, are, she's just having a fantastic time. But one of her fellow um, photographers needed something of hers so he she gave him the a key or something to go do to do whatever he needed to get when he came back he had lost the sleeve <laughs> now she didn't think he stole it she thought he legitimately lost it and he really tried to find it they they went all over trying to find it um ad's asking why don't i have super chat set up because i don't have enough people chatting to need it so you guys chat a whole <laughs> bunch so that i need super chat set up um and AD came in late. I'm having lots of technical issues on the machine that gets me the chat and the uh, web pages that we're looking at. Anyway, 
what she ended up having to do because she couldn't shoot, you can't get into any events. She had to take a bus, you know, an hour, two hours away to go to the police station to to file. Oh, first she had to go and ask for another thing. Hey, I need another sleeve. Basically, you got to restart the entire application process again. They don't just have extra sleeves. They just got to hand out an extra sleeve. So she had to restart the entire uh, process. First, she had to go file a police report. And they were very nice people there to help her out. They didn't speak a lot of English, but she was able to get through it. And um, I think she even used like her phone for some of the translation to translate right, right. some of the, the using the Google, she used Google Translate. Yeah. Um, so eventually, the the, the ladies, uh, the people that were the staff that was there that were you know, that did the credentials were able to get credentials, but it took you know multiple bus rides of hours long, and finally getting it and she missed i think a, a day or two of shooting which you know the the olympics are are, are you know that that long you, you know if you may you know, you wait these four years for the winter olympics and then it's right, only a few two weeks, weeks two weeks yeah and as a photographer you don't you don't have that many chances you know to get those shots that maybe you never know when that one chance was going to be to get the shot and be on the cover of something Anyway, she missed a couple of days of shooting, but she ended up getting it back, and that's what the, the, the photo there is of that that thing. I got to imagine that, you know, that is <laughs> one of the most stressful situations to be in. I, I can't imagine. I hate when I get to a shoot and some, I've forgotten something. I've forgotten a backup battery or the, the first time I went out shooting my Nikon D500, I had set one of my... Um, buttons on the camera you know you can you can set mm -hmm. a button on the camera to do something like let's say a, a switch to spot metering or switch to um yeah, what do you call it uh, matrix metering or, so, or whatever it is you want to switch that i had switched changed the button to set it to dx mode where it a crop mode where it cropped it in and i didn't realize i did that and i shot a few minutes of the of the game. I think I talked about this already, but I shot a few minutes of the game, chopping heads and feet off. Yeah, and I was wondering that can't be. I've done something wrong. I see it in the, I see it in the frame. It wasn't cut off, but the image is cut off. That right there throws me off. Uh, so I can't. I, I feel for that for that girl and and have to put up with all that in a in a foreign place, under stressful situations, and and having to go long distances to get it all fixed. So I think in and the talking end, to people that don't speak the language. Yeah. Yeah. In the end, I, I guess it worked out for her, but I'm sure she wished that wouldn't happen. So yeah, I think reading it, it looks like she was able to get another one the following day. Uh, but, and she didn't even know she was going to get one, but you're right. Yeah. You're here for two weeks and you, you could have lost everything. I mean, how does somebody lose that? Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I think who he, she, she gave it to, didn't realize what that was. Yeah, he sold it. <laughs> and <laughs> well, if he realized what it was, then maybe he would. But I don't think he did, <laughs> and therefore, you know, uh, therefore he didn't pay a close enough attention to it. I think the lesson there is if something that important, don't give it to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ad says it's it's better than leaving a shoot. Uh, my screen is cutting off. Hold on. Rather Better than realizing you've been in JPEG all day. Yeah, we've been I don't in JPEG know, but all day. I don't know, but if you're not at the event to take the shots, I think I would take the JPEG over nothing. I would, but I've also shot one time with my white balance. This is where raw comes in. I shot one time with the white balance set wrong, and all the photos came out blue. Like, eh, okay, it's 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 uh, raw, so I can fix all that. But if it had been JPEG, you know, it'd have been it'd have been a wasted shoot. All right, um, that's my two Olympic stories. I did have, let's move into one that is super cool. It is mm -hmm. tech-related, and this is the, the story about the Falcon Heavy. Um, all, if you're into tech or rockets or space or anything like that, you know, recently uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX launched the Falcon Heavy rocket, which launched his one of his Teslas into space, which is super cool. Yes, the and, roaster. Yeah, that is just incredible. And it had the you know the space guy holding on to the steering wheel. It and had hand out the window. You know, yeah. Hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hand out the window. Had a replica little model car on the dashboard, and you know even took some shots of him looking back at the moon. I mean, back at the Earth. Earth behind. Um, 
And then the two rockets that came back and landed in unison on the pads, just incredibly um, um, cool. Feat of engineering. And really, I think, is for a new generation bringing some, um, you know, some, some excitement to space travel. Anyway, how we're going to bring this into photography is this shot right here by um, photographer, what's his name? Ruben Wu. He takes landscape photos. This is one of his landscape photos where he's illuminating them. And you take them at night. He's illuminating them with a drone. He's flying a drone uh, uh, out there uh, above the landscapes and shining uh, a light down on top on us and light painting with his drone. And he accidentally got some of the exhaust from SpaceX in uh from the Falcon Heavy in the shot. You can see that in the, in the upper left-hand side there. He didn't realize it when he was taking a shot you when he came back. You couldn't plan for that. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't do it. He didn't even realize that was happening. And then he wondered, what is this? And that's what it turned out to be, is, um, is that right there. That is pretty cool. I think it's cool. This, the, the, this story was about him catching that. But just taking drones... Going out into uh, uh, take your landscape shots like this one, and, yeah, I think that's very creative. Them. Wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, because some of them, if we go, if I scroll down here, if you, you know, some of them that there, here, his shot here, or they're far enough away where you're not just going to be able to take a flashlight and illuminate that um, and do it. You're going to have to get a little closer. So he, he's taking that drone and flying all around. So check them out if you know Ruben Wu, um, Ruben Wu. Dot com is his address. Check them out and, and look at those photos. Pretty interesting. No, and I think it's great because you're able to get everything else dark there, which you would not normally be able to get a shot anywhere like this. Yeah. It's actually very creative and, and a great use of a drone, which you wouldn't I wouldn't even have thought of. No, I wouldn't have either, but it's it's you know, it takes um it's a new twist on life light painting. Yes, that's twisted on light painting, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um let's do the uh let's go just stick with um landscape and go with the Chernobyl story. This that one, was you know, cool. Yeah, you know I am a fan of infrared photography. Infrared photography and I had my D2X, Nikon D2X converted to infrared last year. Um and AD says, search drone light painting on YouTube. Hey, my computer is doing something. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, search, search drone light painting on YouTube. Okay, this is um, Chernobyl out in Russia, you know, where they had the nuclear accident. This mm -hmm. photographer, and I probably cannot pronounce his name, um, Vladimir Mit. Mig Uten? Migutin. Migutin. Um he went there as you know, just a personal project, went over went out there to Chernobyl, wanted to give it a different story by giving infrared, which kind of really I've always thought infrared makes things look surreal. And um and that really adds to the Chernobyl, you know, look when you go there and take it in infrared. And as we it to me, spring and you know, when the, when everything's blooming and then in, in summer too, is great times for infrared when there's all that foliage out there. Um and he goes there and I love this first one, this of this the fox gold. or whatever it is. Um but he then he has some others. So that one there, pretty awesome. I don't know if I could get myself to go in anywhere near there. Well, do you Even still have to wear actually, one of those? Like, no, I, I think the safe? radiation levels are, are actually safe in, in the area. Uh, they say the bigger problem from some of the articles I've read is the uh, animals that are living there are eating like the the f food that's starting to grow back there and everything, and they're becoming radiated, and they're going expanding further and further away from wow. Chernobyl, and that's the bigger problem from it. But uh, I think unless you go like right up to the – the core is something you're actually pretty relatively safe for well, short term exposures, at least. You know, that, that even here in Georgia, not that there's radiation poison, but here in Georgia, there's some lakes where they tell you you don't want to eat fish over a certain size because of lead, I think it's lead poisoning or something. So, really, you're, you're right. All that kind of feeds itself into the food chain. And, and while, right. you know, I, I, I tell you, I wouldn't go live there, um, I wouldn't drink water from there. No matter what they told me, 
but I wouldn't eat anything from there. <laughs> right. Um, would would I go there or not? I would. I would want to wear one of those Geiger counter things. Yes. Yes. Carry a canary with you. Oh, wait a second. That's for a mine. Yeah. I'd want to wear one of those. And I, my favorite is still the the fox one here. Yes. Um, I, I love the tree ones. Trees are always amazing when you see them. Yeah. Yeah. Infrared. And I got the same email that AD said that they have a new uh, infrared mode over at LifePixel, who's, who did my conversion, called Hypercolor Infrared. It does look pretty amazing. You know, if I had mine converted, so I'm, I'm done. If If you don't want to have your your camera converted, which it's, you know, permanent conversion, you can do infrared filters. I wanted to have the camera converted because then I don't have to worry. I don't have to have quite as long no, you shutter speeds. See it, right, you could see through it. I can through see through it. it. Yeah, I can, I can, um, I'm probably going to use the same lens most of the time, but it makes it a little bit easier. But you are committed now to that, you know, that infrared. You can't swap it in and out. So right, if you have a spare camera that you don't use, it's not a bad idea. And that's what I did. I looked at the Nikon D2X, which is a great camera, um, but it's only six megapixels. Yeah. I think it's six. Um, maybe it's 12. I don't remember. Somebody look, somebody <laughs> look it up. I, I don't dare do that with this machine right now. Um, okay, good choice. <laughs> yeah. Six or 12, but I, it, I was going to trade it in on a new camera, but it's, it's pretty much worthless, you know, it, right. as far as trading it in. I was not going to get that much for it. So I decided, hey, that's a good camera now that I can go ahead and convert um, to infrared. Unfortunately, I have not done that much infrared with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I need to get out. I'll tell you that, Tim, so as the weather is getting better here in Georgia, I don't know about where you live or where anybody Today listening lives. Uh, it is now, it, today was in the mid seventies here Yeah. and this weekend for the first time in a while, I was able to, to get out and go walking on a trail. If you're, if you're a friend of mine on Facebook or you follow me on Facebook last year when I was starting a lot of my walking, I was, you know, posting photos of me walking on a trail all the time, which mm -hmm. I'm sure got old to everybody else, but you can, you can just ignore my post. <laughs> <laughs> so this weekend, as I was walking, I was noted for noticing that, all the leaves, all the little trees are starting to have little buds. You know, it's all kind of signs of spring are coming out uh, here in Georgia. And I love spring time of year. I, I don't mind winter. I don't mind fall. I'm not a huge fan of summer. But I do like when the seasons change a little bit and that spring right. comes in. So, um, all right. So that's the end of that story, I guess. With that, and how... How about um, you want to do – what do you want to do? You can go over to the internet for Google. You want to do the Google yeah. thing? This is interesting. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I've probably been very guilty of this as well, uh, especially helping my son with any of his school projects or anything, looking for pictures on the internet. And uh, you, you search for uh, – anything that you want on the internet and uh, you just go over to images, you find the image that you need for the, maybe the school project and then you, you click on it and you pretty much just view the image, copy it and then paste it in whatever you wanted. So what I, I guess I didn't realize getting images had actually uh, sued Google over this because you were preventing people from getting more or less recognition for their work. So in reality, I guess I was literally stealing photos that I just, never thought of. So they literally removed, if you go into a uh, search for an image and you go to, we used to say view images, click on it. And it would just give you a little click of, of just a picture on a white background. Let's now you actually have one. to go to the website. Let's use this one from Peter Lick, which will feed into a new story uh, coming up. So you're right. So if we look at this now, there used to be over here next to visit, used to be a button it that says view, view image. image. And, and it's that gone. Is gone. So that that's a now you actually have to view, visit the site to to grab that image if you wanted. So uh, you said Getty sued Google, and I guess part of the settlement they removed the uh, the uh, view view image button. And I guess the internet's all upset about it. And you know what? And you really think about it. Uh, now now that I saw it, it actually makes sense. Yeah. Because you, you're totally bypassing it. Yeah, so big deal, I have an extra step of going to somebody's website and probably isn't going to change for some of the pictures that I'm getting off for uh, my son's or soon my daughter's uh, school projects to get that little image of 
a red car or whatever, um, well, it's like, easy to find it. Like AD said, that you can still right click on it and just hit save image. Um, yeah. Now, I don't know, maybe AD knows this, uh, looking at it in this size. So let's say behind this, if I, in the old way, when I had the view button, view image button, and I clicked that, I think I would have got the full size that the website was using. Correct. Um, if I right click and hit save, am I getting this thumbnail? You get the full image, or, or you am get I getting the, thumbnail? the full? That I don't know. I will tell you though, Tim. If if the, I understand. We always want to give the 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 artists well, recognition. Recognition. I'm getting a error there. There we go. You're getting a little garbled. Yeah, I'm getting a little garbled. Mm -hmm. And very uh, pixelated like, right now. Uh, bandwidth should be coming back in. Okay, I think bandwidth is back under control. I still don't have great bandwidth here, only five up. <laughs> Charter has given the whole world um, better broadband than me. Except for you. Yeah, except for me. <laughs> I except think they know where you live. That's what it is. But uh, AD says you, you get the full, you always, ha you always have. So you right click on it, you get the full image. Okay, so if, if I, I don't mind giving, you know, I want the, the, um, artists to get their credit. I will tell you though that if I can't imagine that's Getty's only thing that Getty is like any big company and their sole reason for doing stuff is monetary. If, oh, if it's only to give the, it can't be just to give the photographer credit. It's got to be to get them more money. And another nothing well, wrong with they, that. They, if you want to get I more money. Part of it was they, they, yeah. uh, they came into a, a partnership between Getty and Google Images. So you're right. Okay. Partnership leads me to believe that it's some sort of monetary. Right. I, I would also say that people like, like, you know, who are using for school projects, people mm -hmm. who are using it even for corporate events where it's internal. Right. Lots of people are doing things internal. If you're doing a, uh, a ad campaign, you know, you better go pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. But lots of people, maybe you're doing a slideshow for your boss, and that's the only place it's ever going to go. Those people are never, ever going to buy the image. Not a chance. Not a chance. You're not going to get a school kid who's submitting uh, his project to his third grade teacher to buy the image. Um, Do an image search for the Explore Grapher. Hover over the image. The size will appear at the bottom. Click on the image once to see the preview of the image. Then right-click, save as. Yeah. The image you get will be full size. Interesting. So uh, what AD is saying is, is even in this case, even though I'm looking at a thumbnail, if I right-click on it, I don't get the full size that they have behind this image. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And part of your search uh, parameters, you can say, do you want a large size, extra large, small so you're limiting or expanding to what size you want, depending on what you're doing. Now, I mean, if I'm putting a for a small section of a a page on a on a book report, you don't need a yeah. three thousand by four thousand pixel image either. But you know, as we've talked about here a lot on the show, is you know that third grade kid, those kind of things. I'm sure most photographers would say, yeah, that you know. You that's, could use that's it. one thing. The person who's using it for the cover of the annual report, the person who's spreading it all over the internet as their own image, you know, there's lots of abuses of, of people's yes. images going on. So I'm not, I'm not trying to discount that. I just thought this was an interesting story, you know, that um, you may not have known. And it may be one day you go and look at this and that view, you know, wasn't there a view image button yeah, here before? Like, did, I, did I go to the wrong place? Did, am I doing this wrong? No, and that's exactly what you would say to yourself. Yeah. So I and the reason I have this image pulled up as a sample, Tim, right, is the lead into the next story. Okay, have you heard of Peter Lick? Yes. Okay, and he is. Oops, that's not that one. Where is? Let me go back to us while I find the image. Um, Peter Lick is, you know, a very successful photographer. Um, with you know, I think he has galleries. Oh, good gosh. Oh, there we go. Has galleries in multiple places in the world. Is, you know, as some um, some people would say he's one of the most, he may be the most successful photographer, but he does have some controversy. And this image that I was just showing a second ago, and this mm -hmm. one here, is the most recent controversy. And the controversy is because um, his people, I don't know 
from all I've read and looked at, is not him directly that's saying it. It's like his sales force or his his representatives are saying, nope, nope. He does. These are all, you know, from the camera. He did not, you know, uh, this is not a composite. He did not composite this image. He is, um, you know, d doing this. He up until recently he was using a film camera, and the debate is whether this image is photoshopped real or, or or not. Uh, and photoshopped in a way of not just like dodging and burning, but photoshopped in um, a way of a composite photo. Can that be real? You know, I'll, here's a better picture of it. Yeah, I, I don't see how this could be real. I mean, if it is, phenomenal shot. So, I mean, what do you, you had to take it with like an 800 millimeter with a. The funny thing was, uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, so I. Um, if you watch the video, it goes with this over an F stoppers. If you watch the video with this, there's four. I think photographers who debate back and forth on whether it is real or not real. And whatever your thoughts are on whether it's achievable or not achievable, there was, and this may have been them just having one guy playing devil's advocate, I don't know. But in the end, um, not the entire team was convinced it's not real. You'd like for, for Peter to come out and say one way or the other is it not real. And to be, look, all image, if you're taking photos from something other than your phone, if you're taking a DSLR and you're taking raw images, they all need to be manipulated in some way or another for color, for exposure, for sharpness, for something you're going to need to do it. Um, and if you want to do composites, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Unless you're a photojournalist, you know, your creativeness, you, your creativity can do anything you want to a photo. Mm -hmm. It's, I think the controversy comes in for him and that he's saying, I'm not doing that. Uh, and then Gary says, Pelik did say it was fake. Uh -huh. Aha, <laughs> there we go. So he did say it was fake. It is, a, it is interesting that it caused that much of a stir and much, much of a debate on whether it is or is not, meaning that there was some possibility that it might have been achievable. Um, you know, a lot of the debate was, could you have the full moon that, that, um, that you know, all bright, where's the dark spot, which there is a little bit on the top, and how do you get the moon so bright and the, the, the mountainside there uh, bright, you know, but it, it could have been different times of day or light painting, whatever else. Uh, and he says, Peter Link doesn't care what you think. <laughs> yeah, he's selling the crap out of this stuff. And some of the controversy just you know, helps with his and, name. I mean, it's a beautiful picture. I mean... Regardless, it's a beautiful picture. Yeah. There, it, it, there's no such thing as bad press. And to, for the most part, that's true, like AD says. There's no such thing as bad press because there, you know, while his name is very popular and very well known around uh, the photography circles, it's not. if I went and polled the people in my office, I would have got to imagine 90% of them have never heard of him. Yeah, I would agree. But, you know. But I think as Gary points may, out, you don't, get, you don't get clouds behind the moon. That should be the telltale sign that this is fake. And I agree with that. Well, you got some clouds in the front, which could have been fog. You don't know where he right. was. That could have been but fog. But how do you get it behind it? You can't. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, there's, that, there's little clues like that 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 may be. But I think, you know, it's interesting to go and – you might want to go to F-Stoppers -stop, F and watch – those guys, it's about 30 minutes, so you maybe scrub through a little bit of it. But it's interesting to go back and forth and hear the arguments for it being real and for it not being real. And how one photographer says he could do this. Now, whether he could or not. But one of the ones, one of the arguments that really convinced it for me is one of the photographers showed a different Peter Link uh, Lick's photo of a moon that if you superimpose it over this one, it is exactly the same. Now, yeah, the moon is not is not that hard to get the same shot of the moon, but it was very, very um, similar in every aspect. So it's 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 interesting to to see that um, argument, and it is a cool shot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no doubt. You can you can you can pay F stoppers to write a story like this. Ah. <laughs> and AD may even uh, may have something where he's saying that he can pay F stoppers to to do that. Um, and that, and that uh, I'm going to sidetrack here for a second. Paying places like F stoppers, I didn't know that story, but paying places like F stoppers to write articles came up in another thing I was interested in, where um, 
a science magazine who accepts articles if you pay them. So let, you give them 50 bucks, your right. article can get published in their science magazine. So there's a story of someone who wrote a story about metachlorines. What is that? What is it that AD will know this? What is it that Darth Vader has and is, you know, that makes them a Jedi? Of course, totally Midi- made Midi- up. Midi- chlorians. No, I think that's wrong too. Yeah, it was the midichlorians that he 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 was uh, off the charts. Had more midichlorians than I think. Uh, we're both saying it wrong, but uh, somebody can tell us which one's closer. <laughs> you, what are you're you, probably what did you closer. Call it? But I don't even know now. So <laughs> I don't know how I pronounce it. But anyway, they wrote an article on that, and then they wrote an article on something about Star Trek as a science story, which are both TV shows that have made up information. Mm-hmm. And so it makes you question some of these things you read in places that you thought you could trust right? on whether they are real or not. Well, you cannot trust pictures at all. No doubt about that. No, no, you cannot trust pictures at all. All right. Speaking about things that you cannot trust and pictures, well, things that you should want to be able to trust and things that you want to be able to see, the next story we have is about... Um, yeah, but my computer. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know what is. I'm gonna have to re do something with that computer. It's about LASIK. We want to talk about LASIK yes. surgery. And while we wait to see if this computer will ever come back, the the deal there is is look. I wear glasses. Tim, mm-hmm. you you don't wear glasses, right? No, I do, no, uh, I do, do not. wear contacts. Not anymore. Not anymore. And you know. As summer comes along and I'm having to take photos in the heat outside, that's when I really start to wish I didn't have to wear glasses. My glasses are sweating. They're falling down. I really don't, don't particularly like putting the glass up to the, to the camera anyway and end up getting it, you know, the oil from your face smeared on it. And then your sweat's running down and getting into the glasses. And, and it's just not a good thing. And I've tried contacts. Over the years, I've tried contacts. Um, in high school, I had them. I tried them some in college, and even after college, I've tried, um, you know, to, to to wear contacts. And for some people, uh, my wife included, contacts are a great option, and she, um, you know, loves them. For me, though, at, at the end of the day, or even before the end of the day, my eyes would be so tired, I never could get used to them. I didn't mind putting them in. But I, I got, you know, they got really tired and I couldn't wear right. them. And I couldn't wear them um, to, you know, a lot of what I do during the day is on a computer or on looking at paper. So I'm, I'm reading a whole lot. So I couldn't really uh, do that. So you had LASIK surgery about 15 years ago, right? Yeah, 15 or 16 years ago, somewhere around there. And how'd that work out? It worked out wonderful. I, I remember uh, doing it uh, um through work, my medical plan, I had a, a discount on it. So I said, you know what? I wanted to try it because I, I was one of those. I, I had glasses. I kept breaking them, whether I fell asleep wearing them, broke them, or I had contacts. I had extended wear and I would wear them seven days, 10 days, forget about them. Who knows how long they were in. Finally decided, you know what? I, I want to step forward with this. And I, I went with a doctor of TLC Eye Care and a it was one of two doctors in New York State at the time that trained other doctors how to do it. I said, all right, that's good enough for me. If he's training other doctors, it means he knows what he's doing. Uh, I've I read this article, and and literally, it's exactly what happened to me. I uh, went in there. Uh, they explained to me everything that was going to happen. Uh, there was actually a line of people before me, probably like five people before me, that were going to have the same surgery. Uh, one of the people in front of me, his vision was really bad. They were only going to do one eye that day and then come back and do it because they said he wouldn't. it would take a while for his eyes to adjust. Uh, I went in there. Um, they, they laid me down on the, uh, the bench. They put a topical solution on my eye, propped my eye open, slit the eye with a, a little knife, I guess, and then a laser went for couldn't have been more than 30, 35 seconds, closed up the eye, went to the other one, no more than five, 10 minutes total, the procedure walked out of there. They put a, I actually found that these, um, the, my wife called them bumblebee patches cause they were plastic, pa- plastic patches that were little holes that I had to wear over my face. She drove me home. I went to sleep, uh, cause my surgery was, I think probably about five, six o'clock at night. And I, I woke up the next morning and it was probably about Six o'clock, five five thirty-six, and I said, "Trish, 
it's 545. She's like, shut up. No, I can see the clock. <laughs> it was it was amazing. <laughs> And uh, it was, it's absolutely worth it. I uh, never had an issue with uh, my eyesight. And as this person talked about in the article, their vision was 20 over 200. That's exactly what my vision was, uh, pretty much blind uh, and uh, worked out great. The, the only thing I couldn't do after that, I couldn't rub my eyes for like, I think you wanted to say three months because the flap that goes down, you could put a wrinkle in it, which would be bad. And I, you know what? To this day, I don't think I've r- rubbed my eyes 15 years later. Um no issues. Uh, I wear sunglasses and now I wear uh, reading glasses because LASIK doesn't cure reading, which is the muscles in your eyes come become weaker as you get older. Hmm. So that that's that's the difference for so reading glasses. Did you uh, did you not have any fear? You know, when I go to the eye doctor and I need to go again, I got these uh, probably three years ago. I need to go back. Uh, when I go there and they do that little, ah, there goes the, the computer. <laughs> Poof. So we're not going to be showing any more uh, web pages. That's that's not going to happen. End of it. Um, <laughs> but, and I'm not going to be able to see chat. So tell me, you have to tell me if somebody sent something in chat. Oh, yes, I get it. Um, okay, yeah, it threw me off. Uh, when I go to the eye doctor, it um, it you know they do that little thing where they say, "Is this better? Or that better? Is this better? Or that better?" And it's you know often I'm I'm not quite sure. Sometimes it's obvious. Oh yeah, a, a is better. Sometimes it's oh yes, yes. I'm not sure, <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, gosh, I'm about to uh, spend hundreds of dollars on glasses based upon yes and no here. <laughs> and I guess the worst case is I just wasted a couple hundred dollars, or however much you know, glasses, or maybe more than that, depending on your glasses. Um, but if I'm getting permanent eye surgery based on is this better, that better, you know, gosh, I might be stuck with this for life. Are they are they doing some different technique to? Yeah, you know, I, I want to say they did something different. He, they, I, I don't remember at the time going through and is this better, that better, this better, that better. And I think they probably show you the one that you say yes five different ways to confirm that it's that one. Um, but uh, I, I don't remember that. Um, I, I remember looking in a machine and it read my eyes to tell me what my vision was. Because I, I, rem- I remember they had it, I mean, this is 15 years ago, and they printed out a, a picture of my eye out with a platter, and so it showed the, all the irregularities. I had astigmatism, which I didn't even know I had. They uh, identified that. And um, yeah, I, I don't think there was like, oh, no, this is what my eyes should be. Now, my eyes stayed relatively stable over the time. I don't think my uh, prescription changed from the time. I, when I, My first time I got glasses was when I was 16. And, you know, it's funny. My son's going to be 16 tomorrow. He's going to go for his permit. And when I went to get my permit, that's when I found out I was blind. Because they, they asked me to look at the machine to read the, the letters. She says, hold on. She cleans the lens. She asked me to look at it again. All right, step back to that line, read the lines on the wall. She's like, you need glasses. I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I, I didn't even know it. Now, you think of it, I was probably tested in school every year. But yeah, for some reason, I, I guess my vision just went really bad. And it never changed from 16 um, until when did I have a uh, – I guess I was 30 – 32 when I had the surgery, 33. Yeah, and, and look, thousands and thousands, I don't know, maybe it's tens or hundreds of thousands of people now have had LASIK. I've no, had it, yeah. No problem at all. I know people at work have had it. Um, and so f- I've often thought, maybe I should do that. You know, my But one thing that always stops me is my dad had it. And now, you know, Tim, you've had it, but we're not blood related. Mm-hmm. And I have this fear <laughs> that there's something, not that this should be the case, but maybe there's something you know, gene related, hereditary related, right. that is going to cause it to, a problem for me too. My dad had it and it was 15 or so years ago when he had it and he's a marathon runner and, um, he, they were doing one, they were doing one at a t- one eye at a time. Um, now and how they, bad was his vision? To be honest, I, d- I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I don't want to say, cause I don't know, but, um, he was having his done and, he had the one eye done, and they had to wait. You know, the doctor told him, don't go jogging for two weeks, whatever it was. Right. He waited twice that long. So it was either two weeks or four weeks, and he waited either four weeks or eight weeks. It was twice as long. While he was jogging, he noticed something going weird with his vision. So he stopped, mm-hmm. and what had happened, you know, you're, that part of your eye, this may get a little, a little gross here, that part of your eye is almost like wet paper. Mm-hmm. And when it 
when that gets messed up, imagine trying to take a wet napkin and sew it, or wet tissue and sew it. You you can't. It won't hold. You can't. It's possible. So they tried multiple times to, to repair it, and he basically is is blind in an eye. Um, so he decided not to get LASIK in the other in the other eye, but. Um, if you like, if you take a, a a flashlight and shine it in that eye, he can see some some brightness, but he's now blind in that one eye. So, mm. um, thinking, eh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just stick with glasses. But it's something I think about from time to time, and you know, and just and as I get older, and um, you know, just think about general health, you, you know, and and getting in shape and, and, you know, being able to do this. If you're like me, Tim, we both do photography for a hobby. Um, I look forward to the day when I can retire and maybe do a little bit of traveling and, you know, get more into my photography hobby than I do now and get into landscape and stuff. And with those thoughts, it's, you know, if I want to be there at that time, if I, if I want to do more with my photography, I got to get in better shape. Um, Mm -hmm. and I know that it is a couple of people in our Facebook group who are, you know, taking a lot of effort to get in better shape. It's part of, you know, while the second half of last year, you didn't see quite as much of JPEG to Raw. We were skipping the number of weeks because um, I've been spending a lot more time exercising and that sucks up, you know, your time. I don't have time to do other things. Right. Hopefully we're getting a little bit better on track and I find a little bit better balance. Um, but, you know, think about that. Think about, you know, Especially for guys, we're not the best at seeing a doctor when we should. You know, Tim, you were with me. This summer will be five year anniversary when I we you know I had yeah. surgery wow. for the cancer on my head, uh, and that was one of those things. If, if you go out to the to the forums, I um, I posted. Go to jpeteraw dot com, click on the forums link, and then go down to the I think the off topic. There's some there's a write up that I did on my cancer with some photos mm-hmm. that are pretty gross. So. It's my head. It's all um, enter with caution. It's 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 you know work safe except for it being gross. Um, but you know I ignored that for a number of years and let it let it go. And I had a a very mm-hmm. lucky outcome from that. So you know don't ignore those things. Uh, and, and I also was diagnosed with diabetes probably three years ago and didn't go to the doctor until. You know, a few months back, but you know, that we've got back under control. Don't ignore those things. Don't play with them. And if you're like me, I don't, you know, overweight, <laughs> you know, it's the winter weight. Just, I would tell you this, I, this is, I, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not an expert on working out. You know, as you can see, I'm, I'm um, still working on it. It is a struggle. It is a, something that, you know, like in my case, I might have spent 30 years in high school and in college, I was in good shape. 30 years getting into this is not going to be three months getting out of it. <laughs> no. uh, it's going to take some time and you won't see benefits the first little bit, but just keep at it, keep at it and you know, do a lifestyle change. For me, the food is still, I don't eat crazy, but the food is still a little bit of a, I have not got that under control and food is going to be yeah, 80, 90% percent of your, your, your uh, weight loss. Exercise doesn't do as much. You can work out for an hour and, and burn 500 calories, and that one cookie may be 500 calories. Right. Um, but you know. Yeah, but if you break if you break the cookie, the calories fall out, don't they? <laughs> they do. Yeah, you can like shake them out. Um, <laughs> but it does. It is great for the cardio. It is great cardio. Yes. Um, I can even in the. I've started walking and are on the treadmill or outside every day since August, and I'm starting to do a little bit of weights. You know, getting a little bit of muscle there. Did some weights. Um, I got a treadmill in the house. And I can tell you that I can notice a difference in my heart rate. I can notice a difference in when I work out. It doesn't um, – it's getting easier or I need to push a little more to make it to work out. But it's got a long haul. Oh, it needs to be a lifestyle change. So I've really got into that. I'm wearing my workout clothes because when we're done here, I'm going to go work out on the treadmill. Um it is a lifestyle change. What I need to do is get the lifestyle change of food in there too. And that will make, um, you know, you know, photography get, even easier. Uh, Christina just pointed out my fitness pal helps log your food and see what you I eat. Am, and, and, and I actually use my fitness pal. I, I've probably been using it for, uh, 
five, six years. And as my wife will say every once in a while, did you add that cookie that you had? And, uh, you know, sometimes I forget, but the past, uh, week I started, uh, in between meal snacking, I totally cut out and I actually lost uh, three pounds. So, um, I, I know that my problem is seafood. I see it and I'm going to eat. It. I, I have zero willpower, zero. Uh, I, you know, I would tell you that, let's see what I use a Fitbit and that has been great for me. I am, I'm a stats kind of guy. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love stats. I love, I love something to, to motivate me and to look at it. And Tim's saying that because we're <laughs> Fitbit, Fitbit friends and gosh, it's gone a long time that I've been beating Tim. Um, and it's been like two months now in a row that you've been crushing me. Yeah. And, and, you know, so th- it, that, what motivates me is just me. I got a target and I hit, I try and hit it. Um, I'm trying not to, there's a competitive side of Mike that you may not know that I've tried to, you know, I'm not trying to fight everybody that's on my friend list in, in this because I would, I would injure myself trying to walk too much. So I'm trying, I got my program. I'm trying to do my program and stick to it. So, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15,000 steps a day with that. And, um, basically having a set, um, cycle for me, you know, I, a certain time of night, I come down here and start working out. Um, and then, you know, certain time I go to bed, you know, it, it, for a lot of us photographers, I, I'm sure everybody who's a photographer, who's listening to this, you have spent hours and hours sitting at your computer editing or, you know, reading or watching videos or doing whatever you're doing, hours and hours of sitting. Um, and as you get older, that starts to add up and starts to get harder to lose this weight. So just keep that in mind to, to be active. I'm, there's lots of people, you know, AD is, is a, is a success story who, who did that. He got himself in much better shape. Um, and he, you know, AD says sugar. So, a couple of events changed my thinking there. And one of them was AD, um, gosh, AD, this must have been a couple of years ago. Someone for Christmas gave me a box of nerds. I love nerds, the nerd candy. And that box, you ever, you know, like a big box of Kellogg's yeah, corn, huge. corn flakes? Yeah, there's a lot in there. With a, like a Kellogg's corn flakes Yeah, I, box. I know which one, yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. So I got a nerd box that big. Yeah, and I stuck it on my desk, took a photo of it, and AD commented on it that you know that will kill me, <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember what he said. Is you, go ahead and eat that, you're gonna die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's, that's a little dramatic, but it it yeah it's it's it definitely is not healthy for you. Um, sugars and carbs and all that kind of stuff start to add up and and hit you with that and uh, with like everything in moderation. So I'm, I'm trying to do a lot more walking. I have enjoyed going out on the trail and walking. And um, even though you only see these people in passing as you, you walk and you know, the th- what is it? 10 seconds as you walk by each other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing how when you do this day every day, you actually get like trail friends. I'll call them trail friends because you're not friends off, off the trail, <laughs> but you become trail friends. And I don't know any of their names. I've made up nicknames for all of them. Cause that's how I have fun on the trail. Or I make up a nickname for somebody like I, one guy called BR because he's uh, got his iPad out and he's always reading a book. So book reader as he's, you know, walking down the trail, which is impressive. He's walking that fast and, and reading, but that is just to say to, um, to, you know, Think about getting in shape as we head into spring. Great time to get out and be a little more active and get off your computer every once in a while. Uh, all right, so we're heading into the final few minutes here. Let me say something, Tim, that I see Christina out there. Christina and uh, Amber, Christina Binge and Amber Salat. Mm-hmm. I hope I said her name right. Are I two new additions to our, our uh, monthly photo contest review team we have we had go. in the past we had tim myself gina nikki and debbie and now we're adding christina and uh amber to the team if you are in our facebook group you've seen their photos you've seen their photos in the contest um love their work and so excited to have them as part of the review team mm-hmm and let me see if this machine is working now mm. so i can say Sounds like you'd be rebuilding it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it, it's a. It's a new SSD, so I don't know if it's some other hardware issue or whatever. But 
I'll deal with that later on. If you go, if you want to join the monthly photo contest this month for February, as we have eight more days left, uh, the con- it is open. The theme is open. You can join by going to jpegdraw slash jpegdraw.com slash contest. And there there's links to enter. Or you can just go to our Facebook group, the beginner group or the regular group, either one that you feel more comfortable in, and join the contest there. Or um, if you want to subscribe to the show, go over to jpegdraw.com slash subscribe. And you can get the show on YouTube, on Spreaker, on iHeartRadio, on Stitcher, Vimeo, TuneIn, and uh, I don't know if I said iTunes. I probably did. But you know, on all those different places, we'd love to have you come out there. And Podbean. I don't have that there. I need to put that there. Podbean is um, our new, the new hotness for us. We're getting lots of views over there, lots of listens over there. And um, like I mentioned in the past, they're getting a new show every Sunday because they're so far behind. So they won't hear this for like eight weeks. But uh, we welcome all you guys over there. Uh, with that said, I think we're going to head into the post show and we'll continue the discussion that's going on out in chat in the post show. I've got a little bit different theme I'm doing this month, Tim, with the, the shots, but things are all screwy. So let's head into the post show. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Till next time, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.